Hey everybody, boys, that's BK Forex. Welcome to the weekly technicals for the majors for Euro dollar, dollar yen and pound dollar for October 8th to October 12th, 2018. Dollar rally falls short. That's really the takeaway this week as the dollar really had a chance to break out to absolute fresh highs, especially against the yen. Failed to do so because the latest data just did not really come up to the level expected. Jobs were a little weaker, more importantly, wages really didn't come up to a he nice torrid pace. They're, they're going at a decent pace, but um, at three-tenths of one percent on a month-to-month -month basis, they're essentially running at around 3.6 percent nominal. With two percent inflation, perhaps even higher inflation, real wages are only one percent gains. That's just not enough to really justify a huge expansion um, of U.S. economy. And it really feels, I've been arguing, making this argument for quite a while, that it really feels like we had peak growth in Q2, Q3, and it looks like everything is starting to roll over. Uh, when you look at the capital expenditure spending across the world, only U.S. continues to expand capital spending. Everywhere else across the world, CapEx has tapered, uh, and it looks like I think U.S. is going to be the next one in line especially with a higher cost of capital. The, the, the Fed seems to be, what's interesting, I think it's really fascinating actually in all this, is that the Fed is all systems go to raise rates and the market is actually not responding to it. Dollar yen, the 10 year is 322 and dollar yen can't make it to 115. It's a big, big, interesting uh, and important factor. When you look at the levels here, the euro certainly came down. The euro is having its own existential moment now with with Italy, um, and it's, I fear it's going to get worse. Um, the Italians seem to be taking a page out of Donald Trump's playbook, which is destroy everything in your path until you get your way, which probably means they're going to very much challenge all of the norms of the European Union. They're probably gonna blow through their deficit targets, not just for this year, but for next one, because certainly um, deficit spending is not going to get growth in Italy going any which way, um, but stronger. And that's very likely to leave the ECB back as the backstop of last resort, which means that the whole notion of taper, the whole notion of, of, of renormalization of monetary policy very much in, um, in doubt. Um, and that really pushes Euro, I think, to fresh uh, swing lows, perhaps even below the 1300 eventually. Um, this story does not seem to be going away. And I think that's the existential story the, or rather, the, the primary, primary story that's going to drive trade in the euro. Now, there'll be counter-trend moves and counter-trend days, but unless you get confident that, that the Italian sovereign debt story um, has gone off the front pages and is under control, euro, to me, remains a sell in every rally at this point. Although it doesn't look nearly as horrible technically as, as I suggest that it is fundamentally. Uh, yen is essentially 115, 113. We, we broke to fresh fresh highs and couldn't make it. Today's price action, I think, is very telling and very negative uh, for dollar yen. Uh, and cable actually is getting tremendous boost from fresh support on Brexit. We're above 130. Uh, and if we get more positive Brexit news, we could get a little bit of a run there as well. The data this week is much more muted than last week. We don't have really nearly as much important data on the calendar, primarily UK Inflation data, uh, UK manufacturing data, this will be interesting to just sort of see. And then, of course, U.S. inflationary data as well. Um, this will be interesting to see because if we're, in a, uh, if we're sort of in a moment where inflation runs hot but wages don't, it really puts the Fed into a horrible bind. Um, and and we'll, you know, we'll see the market right now is essentially uh, looking for 2.2, which is slightly above the 2% rate but not horrid. Um, anywhere around this level probably will have minimal impact on, on the market. But if we run hot, that's certainly going to put pressure, upward pressure on dollar yen on the idea that the Fed is going to have to raise rates stronger. If we run a little bit cooler, um, that could be the final death knell for a return back to 1300 on the um, on the yen trade. Uh, and then aside from that, really not much else uh, on the calendar for the, for the majors. It's basically U.S. inflationary data, U.K. inflationary data just a tiny modicum of industrial data out of Germany. That's really the, uh, the whole calendar. Now, when you look at the charts here, here's the interesting part. So the euro really hanging on for dear life right back towards the uh, 1500 level, holding support at this, um, at this 500 SMA. Uh, to me, 
the euro becomes a sell if we break the lows here. So the lows here were around, what, 1450? That's pretty much it. Um, that 1450, really, really a key level. If we, if we take that to the downside, it really uh, targets the low at around the 1300s um, and uh, possibly even, even worse. So, so to me, the trade right now is to simply wait and see if the market feels um, as negative about uh, the euro as I do at this point. Uh, and tries to push the pair down on further concerns about um, sovereign debt. We also could be just in a, in, a, in a tight little consolidative mode this whole week, really not have a lot of actions one way or the other. The trade that I think is really interesting is, is look at this fail, just a massive, massive fail by yen. It started really yesterday. We sort of failed the 1450, right? This was um, uh, yesterday's trade. We failed to hold the 1450s, and this big reversal First of all, we're very stretched away from 20 and the 500, so it's a natural return just back to, to a support level here at around um, um, 1270, 1300, which seems to be the target. I think the first initial target is to take out the 1350, perhaps in Asia, when um, uh, when you guys open up trade on on Sunday night, Monday night, uh, Monday to you. Um, but you know, it, yen has just sort of been notorious for making these big runs and then big corrective moves. Um, we are very likely to make a corrective move at a higher level because certainly U.S. rates are supportive. But the fact that we're at 324 and we can't even take out the 115 is just telling at how at how unenthused the market is about the dollar yen trade uh, to the upside. That I think is 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 interesting um, and not very positive for for yen bulls at this point. I really I would do not want to be. I would only want to start buying yen underneath the 113s, even ideally maybe around 1250s, because that's certainly going to provide the first bastion of support. Uh, but I wouldn't want to be buying yen until and unless it took out the uh, the 1450 level. Um, you, re you even really want to see it take out the 15, because if it takes out the 15, that would be a major, major a milestone. I think if we go back, let me just go back to the weeklies, and we can look at the, uh, we haven't looked at this, this level in a long, long time. So let's get rid of this. Um, Look at the weeklies. The weekly is just such an ugly candle. This is a big shooting star candle. Terrible, uh, terrible candle for the bulls, suggesting a reversal, probably, like I said, the 1250 on the weeklies. So, yes, yeah, so this whole level, the 1500, has been a massive, massive overhang since um, a, more than a year ago. And uh, if we do take that out, that really opens up the run all the way up to, to the big swing high, the 1750. Right now, though, you basically have to operate that um, every rally here is an opportunity to sell against this 1450 top, 1500 top um, in, in the end. Big failure on the weeklies suggests flashing, flashing red to anybody who, uh, who's considering a long here. And it, really an opportunity, I think, um, any kind of a trade back up into the 1390s, 1400s really presents a really interesting low risk opportunity to short this thing all the way down to the 1250s. Um, and then cable. So this is the weekly cable. It's it's looking clearly a little bit more constructive. We've retaken a twenty on the uh, uh, on the weekly, which is pretty constructive. The the weekly candle looks very bullish because we came off the top. Let me just sort of zoom in on this. Look at this. This is a pretty decent looking bullish weekly candle. Um, and the dailies also look uh, not bad. As as on the dailies, we're now recapturing the five hundred SMA. It has scope to go to thirty two, perhaps even thirty two fifty. Certainly the relative bid here. Um, data will be of interest, but of much greater interest will be the sort of last minute flurry that seems to be occurring of Europeans trying their damnest to come up with a trade deal that they can make work with the, uh, uh, with the Brits. Um, and if they can offer them even a modicum of uh, a soft Brexit, that should prove to be a positive here for another 100, maybe 150 points. It's been a seesaw price action, but if you kind of pull back, actually, the, the interesting thing here is if you pull back is that we have a series of higher lows here, um, and cable, just on this, this little slice of uh, price action from August, looks relatively bullish. Um, a truly bullish move, of course, would, would take out the 33s, but from here to there, there's still lots of scope here to move up, and therefore, I think cable certainly becomes a relative bid as we enter the week.